Two months ago, I made a video introducing the initial version of LTXV released by Lightrix. It was fast in generation, had low resource requirements, and delivered decent output quality. Just now, its upgraded version, 0.9.5, has been released. Not only does it retain all the previous advantages, but it also introduces several new features and optimizations, upgraded to a commercial use license, support for higher resolution output, improved video quality, reduced artifacts, and the introduction of an entirely new keyframe control feature, significantly enhancing its versatility. Notably, among open source models, only COG Video X currently supports start to end frame control. I tested this feature and generated some videos, which turned out quite well so I decided to make a video to share my findings. On a side note, I've been working on a 1.2.1 video for a while, but the generation speed is unbearably slow. LTXV is so much smoother, it's a true leap forward. Just like the previous LTXV release, Comfy UI has once again provided native support right from the start, sharing several workflows and showcasing results. The text-to-video outputs include natural landscapes and facial expressions while the image-to-video test features an adorable girl. Keyframe control is the highlight this time, and one particularly impressive example is a video where a house blooms like a flower using start-to-end frames. Now, let's look at the model files needed for this version. There's a combined SafeTensors file, including both the main model and VAE, which should be placed in the model slash checkpoints directory. The text encoder is T5 underscore XXL, which you likely already have if you've used Flux for image generation. Place it in model slash text underscore encoders, or model slash clip also works. In my previous video, I shared some enhanced workflows, including text to video, image to video, and Flux generated images converted into video. These workflows can still work with version 0.9.5 but require slight adjustments. This is mainly because the LTX trick plugin that applied STG has now been merged into LTX video. If you've installed the old plugin, you'll need to install this new plugin, and the old one can be removed. Since the new plugin merges all previous functionalities, it is fully compatible. I switched to version 0.9.5 for testing and compared the results with the initial release. However, the new version introduces several official nodes, including a prompt enhancer that uses a large language model to refine prompts to better suit LTXV, and LTXV preprocess, which helps adjust image formats for image to video generation. The way STG is used has also changed, making the process less complex than before. I think it's best to adopt the new workflows. This time, Lightrix shared seven different workflows along with the new model release. I've made some minor modifications to a few of them. If you're interested, you can find them in the description. Now, let's check out the workflows. We'll start with text to video. Remember to set the model and clip to local versions. These two nodes here handle prompt enhancement. I'll connect them and see how the prompt gets expanded. I input just a simple a beautiful lady. And these nodes apply STG. It's much easier to understand compared to the old override attention method. Keeping the step count at 20, I'll run it now. The Llama and Florence 2 model are loaded to expand the prompt. As expected, it generates a much longer description adding detailed actions, perspectives, atmosphere, and finer details. My local RTX 4080 worked for a bit. Sampling took 28 seconds, and decoding took 4 seconds. The video is ready. I opened the preview, and the results look decent. Perhaps increasing the step count would improve the details of her outfit. Feel free to experiment. Now, let's load the image to video workflow. I'll continue using the little floral dress robot and set the prompt to a cute little robot looking around. Preview enabled. LTXV preprocess compresses the image slightly to match the quality used in LTXV's training, helping the model adapt better. 
It works similarly to the H.264 conversion from previous workflows. Running the process now. The expanded description is much more detailed compared to my old workflow that used Florence 2 for inverse prompt engineering. Sampling took 30 seconds, but the results weren't great, there were noticeable distortions in the robot's head. Typically, increasing the step count can help. I bumped it up to 40 and ran it again. After 64 seconds of sampling, the video looks fine now. I placed the 20 step, 40 step, and old workflow results side by side. Which one do you think looks best? Keyframe control is the core highlight of this model update, and I find it quite useful. The official example features a donkey skateboarding from a volcano to a glacier. I tweaked it a bit, now it's a giraffe soaring through the skies and diving into the ground. Let me demonstrate something more interesting. I'll switch to these two images, starting with a misty cloud and ending with the silhouette of a woman. The image dimensions should be consistent. This is a vertical image, so 512 by 768 should work well. In LTXV ad guide, the frame underscore IDX refers to the frame sequence where you want this image to appear in the video. 0 means the first frame, dash 1 is the last frame, and for a video with a total length of 121 frames, we can also enter 120. For the prompt, details matter, a more detailed description yields better results. I'm using this command to let a large language model generate a smooth transition between the two images. It's a bit long, but it ensures stability. Click Run. After 52 seconds, the result is out, let's take a look. The effect is perfect, right? The two images I just used were directly generated by Flux using prompts, specifically. Another approach is to use in painting. For example, I have an image of a pink house, and I repaint the rooftop with fluffy white clouds. Then, I use the same command to get prompts from the language model, keep everything else unchanged, and just hit run. The result is out, let's check it. Ah, uh, I forgot to adjust the dimensions, so the sides of the house got cropped, but the video effect still looks good. I also tried another variation of this, where a little girl opens the door and walks out of the house. It turned out quite interesting. Keep in mind that, in theory, you can define content for any frame, it's not limited to just the start and end frames. For example, I experimented with this sequence, starting with mist, transitioning into a person in the middle, and ending with mist again. The final effect looks like this. Now, let's move on to the next workflow, video continuation. Take a look at these two nodes. They extract the last nine frames of the video and let LTXV generate 65 additional frames. Finally, they merge these new 65 frames with the previous 56 frames, 65 to 9. I won't change the assets, let's just run it and see the result. The sampling process took 28 seconds. Comparing the original video with the final result, you can see that the latter half of the new video is completely different, yet it blends seamlessly. This is much more stable than looping the last frame repeatedly. The next workflow is quite similar, but instead of extending forward, it generates frames backward. Let's run it and see the result. With these two functions, you can theoretically extend videos indefinitely. Now, let's look at Flow Edit. This provides a very practical feature, similar to anime style redraw that I worked on before. We take an input video, extract frame 1, 0 plus 1, and frame 169, 168 plus 1, and paint them, and feed them back into LTXV. I'll reduce the resolution slightly for easier recording. Click Run, speed it up, and let's check the result. Pay attention to the hairstyle. The video starts with the character matching image 1, and after turning their head, they maintain the look of image 2. RF Edit is another approach. It repaints the starting frame into a vibrant, colorful style and then feeds it into LTXV. Click Run. And we get an entirely new video in that art style. That's the end of the workflow demo. Here's a quick summary. 
LTXV stays true to its original mission, while Huanyu and Video and One 2.1 compete in the high-quality space, often requiring 10-plus minutes for video generation, LTXV maintains its fast generation speed, solid quality, and introduces numerous optimizations and practical new features based on community feedback. Definitely worth trying. Alright, that's it for today's video. You can find the model, plugins, and workflows in the description. See you next time.